Hello, in this video we are going to take a very brief look at this book. It is called Hilbert Space. It was written by Berberian Chelsea Publishing. Introduction to Hilbert Space, Sterling K. Berberian, Professor of Mathematics, the University of Texas at Austin. This old book, first published in 61, then in 76. Hmm. Interesting. So not much. Oh, this one's also printed on acid-free paper. Wow, he was born in 26. Wow. Wow, so I don't know if he's still alive today, but that would make him 98 years old, approximately, depending on, on his birthday. Wow. Crazy. And to Gene Arnold. This textbook has evolved from a set of lecture notes which I have prepared for a semester course in Hilbert Space at the State University of Iowa. In both the course and the book, I have in mind first or second year graduate students in mathematics and related fields such as physics. Cool. And here he signs it, SKB, September 61, Iowa City. Here we go, vector spaces. So a nice place to start. Hilbert spaces. Then we have closed linear subspaces. Continuous linear mappings. And then continuous linear forms in Hilbert space. And then operators in Hilbert space. Proper values. And then completely continuous operators. Introduction to Hilbert space. So here's how it starts. Ideally, before you study this, by the way, you want to have some algebra. You want to know abstract algebra. You know, this is not going to be your first introduction to vector spaces. Um, you know, ideally, you already know some stuff, right? So you know how to write proofs and stuff. Underlying every Hilbert space, there is a vector space. The present chapter contains preparatory material on vector spaces. The reader who was already acquainted with the basic theory of vector spaces can pass directly to chapter two, for there is nothing in the present chapter which is particularly oriented toward Hilbert space. In the sequel, complex numbers will also be referred to as scalars. So here it talks about vector spaces. Let's, uh, well, look at this. Let me just show you something first. I was gonna say, let's jump to Hilbert spaces, but let's, let's, let's look at this. Look at all the examples that Barbarian gives you. So, I mean, I mean, I guess you could use this as an introductory text, but it's, it's good though. There's a lot of examples of vector spaces here. I think this is excellent content. This is so good. Such a good book. And then look, the, the structure is very nice. It's a really good layout. A little proof here of the generalized associative law. And then let's go, let's go to the end. So there's exercises, you see, but there's, there's exercises at the end of every section, but there's no, well, there's examples, exercises here, but I don't think there's answers. Are there? I didn't see answers in the, uh, I don't think there are, which there's an appendix. I have another book. I was looking for answers in the back of the book and it had a bibli bib bibliography. I kid you not, it was like this thick. It was like that thick, the thickness of the book. But it had no answers. I was thinking like, ah. Oh. <laughs> it took all that time to compile the bibliography, but you couldn't put some answers in the back of the book. Come on, even just the odds, something. So let's go to Hilbert space. Pre-Hilbert spaces, here we go, let's look at this. The conjugate of a complex number, lambda, will be denoted by lambda star. Thus, if lambda is equal to alpha plus i beta, where alpha and beta are real numbers, then lambda star is equal to alpha minus i beta. The familiar properties of conjugation are as follows. Yeah, cool. A pre-Hilbert space is a complex vector space P, 
that's some fancy letter, I think I'm just going to call it P. For each pair of vectors x, y, and p, there is determined a complex number called the scalar product of x and y, denoted, oh, interesting, scalar products are assumed to obey these rules. Yeah, I've, I've seen that notation before, but it's not, it's not common. It's not common notation. Uh, you can see it's a very clean book. Um, the, the, what's really missing from this textbook to make it perfect would be answers, but it's it's small, it's it's very well done, very well done. And this particular copy uh, belonged to Douglas Mackey, whoever that is. Maybe he's famous, maybe not. Um, smell this. Oh wow, that smells good. That smells good. That smells good. Isomorphic vector spaces. A vector space V is said to be whoops, isomorphic with a vector W in case there exists a bijective linear mapping T from V to W. Such a mapping T is called a vector space isomorphism of V onto W. Okay. The language is strange, right? It says a vector space V is said to be isomorphic with a vector space W in case there exists. I mean, I guess I mean... I would just say if there exists. I don't know why I'm nitpicking it, but I just I just thought it was an odd use of, of language. But maybe it's old school language, or maybe it's correct. I don't, I don't know. And you have great exercises here. These are great. Oh, it's a shame there's no answers. But these are really good. It's a really good book. I don't like that. I'm not a fan of the notation, <laughs> but yeah. And it has an index, which means you could basically use it uh, as a reference. There's there's other books on Hilbert spaces, by the way. I have other ones. Um, Paul Halmos has a book on Hilbert spaces. Paul Halmos has a lot of books. That guy was hardcore, very hardcore. Yeah. Continuous linear mappings. You, you see a lot of this stuff in other classes and other books, so it's kind of like, it's kind of fun when you study stuff like this because you see a lot of math, like you see linear algebra, you see abstract algebra, you see topology, you see like a lot of things from different, um, different areas of math, so it's kind of fun when you, uh, when you study this stuff. Yeah. Anyways, I'll, I'll look for this book. I'm sure I can find it. I, I, I doubt it's rare. I don't know. Uh, if I can find it, I'll leave a link in the uh, description of this video and subscribe if you want. Oh, also, I have courses. Uh, they're on Udemy, but if you get them, please use my links from my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathbits.com or from the description of any of my videos because I lowered the price and it helps me. Until next time, keep doing math.